Hey guys, Richard Holder here. As you know, one of the biggest questions I get is, what is the best camshaft to use? Or what is the best turbo to use? And also, what is the best intake manifold to use? So I'm gonna show you what the best intake is for your LS. In this video, I'm gonna show you what the best LS intake manifold is, but before we can do that, we need to define what we mean by LS. Obviously, there are a ton of different LS motors from 4.8 to 7 liters. We've got Cathedral Port and Rec Port. We've got Street and Strip and Race. And we've got all kinds of stuff. So let's define what we're trying to talk about. First of all, this is the best intake manifold for a Cathedral Port application. And a Cathedral Port application, I'm talking about a 4.8, 5.3, and a 6.0. And I'm also not talking about super high RPM race motors like 8,000, 8,500, 9,000 RPM. I'm talking about in the normal RPM range from zero RPM to 7,000 RPM. What is the best intake manifold? And that is the fast manifold. I've run a number of tests on all sorts of displacements and all sorts of RPM. And your next question is, okay, let's say that the fast intake manifold makes the most power up to 7,000 RPM on a 4.8 and a 5.3 and a 6.0. NA, what about under boost? Yes, I even have turbocharged combinations because guess what? Whatever it does NA, it also does under boost. To demonstrate how well the fast intake manifold works on a variety of different combinations, what I'm going to do is first run it on a 4.8 and then we'll try a 5.3 and then a 6.0. And because I know that the next question after we run all the NA stuff is, is yeah, but what does it do under boost? Then we're going to take a look at what happens when we run a turbo on these different combinations. So let's start out with our 4.8. This was a 4.8 LR4 junkyard motor. You know, you know, you know what I do. You know the way I do it. So this was a 4.8. It had uh, some TEA, total engine airflow, stage 2, 706 heads. It had a crane, 224, 232 cam, 590 lift, 114 LSA. So it had, it was basically a heads cam and intake manifold on a 4.8, on a stock 4.8 short block, a high mileage deal. And what we did first was put the... Uh, early truck intake manifold on it, the one that came on the 4.8 when we got it from the wrecking yard. So we ran it with the heads cam and the truck intake manifold first, and this thing produced 452 horsepower and 388 foot-pounds of torque, you know, running out here, you know, making peak power at 68 or 100 or so. And here's what happened. This is with the stock truck intake. Here's what happened when we put the, this was an LSX RT, but, and that's one of the questions that a guys, a lot of guys get is, what's the difference between an LSXRT and an LSXR? They call the LSXRT a truck manifold, but it's actually not. I think only because it fits under the hood of a truck, maybe. But it is not a truck manifold. It is not a low RPM manifold. It makes basically the same power curve as the LSXR. So the LSXR and the LSXRT make almost identical power curves in every time that I've ever tested it. It might shift it a little bit one way or the other, but basically they're the same kind of manifold. But here's what happened when we put the LSXRT on. You can see it made a lot more power. Peak power jumped up to 476 horsepower. Peak torque uh, was not changed dramatically, but it was shifted out a little bit, 392 foot-pounds. So you can kind of see the sine waves going here. Um, and the, the little truck manifold made a little bit more in some areas, like in this spot right here. It was up about 16 or 17 foot-pounds. These are kind of the same down here in this area below 4,200 RPM. We had a little dip on the fast kind of here in the middle. And then in, in this range from 5,500 out to past 7,000 RPM, the fast manifold obviously was quite a bit better, even on a 4.8, which is probably the worst combination for it being this small uh, and, and on a manifold that can flow this kind of air and make this kind of power. So. If it works on a 4.8, it's definitely going to work on the other combination. So let's check those our out. Our next combination where we compared the fast manifold was our 6-liter test motor. This is the one that I ran with all of the intake manifolds on the big LS LS intake manifold, the big Cathedral Port LS test. So this was, this was our 6-liter, a modified 6-liter equipped with an LS1 intake. And this was a, uh, had forged internals in it. It had a Comp 469 cam, which is a 617, 624. 231, 247 degree duration at 113 degree LSA. It had a good set of heads on it. The Airflow Research uh, 230s, 58cc chambers, head engine 7.8s headers, and obviously we tuned it with a Holly HP. We started off all of this with the LS1 intake manifold, and our modified 6 liter did well. It made 535 horsepower and 468 foot pounds of torque. 
But here's what happened when we ran some of the other manifolds. And I know one of the things, here's the, here's the early truck, for instance, the truck manifold. And I know what guys are asking about. Oh, yeah, but what, Richard, what about the TBS intake? Okay, the TBSS intake, the Trailblazer, does work really well. It works a lot better than the LS1, and it works better than the early truck manifold, especially on an application like this where it's making good power. But here's what happened when we put the fast on, and this is an LSXR. The LSXRT does the same thing as I said before. So here's the LSXR. Uh, we went from, you know, for instance, with the Trailblazer SS, we went from 562 horsepower with the fast, we went to 591. So it's a big change in power. There was a slight drop in power down here below 4,500 RPM com compared to the Trailblazer SS. So for the Trailblazer SS, it does add power compared to the truck manifold. It just does not make as much as the fast does, but it, <laughs> it does cost a lot less. And here's uh, the other thing I want you to remember. We compared this on a six, six liter making nearly 600 horsepower. So a Trailblazer SS, the difference between the Trailblazer SS and the fast manifold would be less on a less powerful combination on a 4.8 or a 5.3 making 450 or 500 horsepower. The difference between the Trailblazer SS and the fast would be much less significant and the Trailblazer SS might be a better choice there simply from a cost standpoint because if you're only getting another 10 or 12 horsepower, is it really worth the extra money that you'd have to spend on the fast? rather than just go with the Trailblazer SS, although even those things are getting more and more expensive. So now let's take a look. We've run a 4.8 and a 6.0. Let's take a look at a 5.3 and boost. Our final combination was actually a 5.3 liter. And what we did was compare the at factory LS6 manifold to the short runner fabricated manifold that everybody loves and the fast manifold. And I did it both NA and under boost. In fact, I did it also with two sets of cylinder heads. We compared the 706 head to the 317 head at the same boost level. And we kind of all know how that came out. We have a video up on that where we compared the 706 to the 317. And the 706 makes more power than the 317 because it has more compression. It's the right size, not, not just the right CC chamber, but the right size chamber for 4853. Not to say that you can't make good power with a 317, you can. And everybody asks about that particular test. Well, yeah, what about the extra airflow offered by the 317? When does that come into play? Well, it comes into play at some time <laughs> way up in the horsepower range. Because think about this, if you run a throttle body on uh, an intake manifold, and it makes a five or 10 extra horsepower because there was an airflow restriction, when you add positive pressure to that throttle body, <laughs> is it still a restriction? It's not. And lots of guys making a ton of power with a stock 5.3. And lots of guys making a ton of power with 317 heads too. And again, as I always say, there might be a good argument to be made for the fact that you're running these things on pump gas and maybe the lower compression then will help you run more boost and yada, yada, yada. But on this intake test, we ran our 5.3 liter with the 706 head. Our 5.3 was a junkyard bottom end. It had our comp 54-454-11 uh, cam, which is a 613-623. 227, 243 at 50, and 113 degree load separation on go. So it had a it had a healthy camshaft in it. It had the stock 706 heads with just valve springs on it, and the LS6 and a stock throttle body size for the opening on the LS6 intake manifold. Run NA, our combination with long tube headers on it, produced 468 horsepower and 412 foot pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we put our uh, fabricated intake manifold, the short runner fabricated, sniper, there's lots of guys that make it. And it did indeed make more peak power. Peak power was up to 486 horsepower, but it only made more power than the LS6 after 6100 RPM or so. And below that, it made less torque everywhere. So that's the thing. Do you want to have, uh, you know, if we're limiting our thing to a 7000 RPM deal, it did make more power from 6,200 to 7,000, but less below that. So you kind of would have to decide here what you want. Here's what happened when we added the fast to this. And as you can see, the fast made, well, <laughs> basically made as much peak power as the short runner did. It just did it earlier. And as we have seen on the 4.8 and the 6.0, it made a lot more power than the LS6. 
uh, peak power on the fast was up to 486 horsepower. It made a lot more torque than both of them. It made 425 foot pounds. So if you compare it to the short runner manifold, it like kills it everywhere all the way up to 7,000. So for a 7,000 RPM combination, the fast is really, really hard to beat. If you want to make an 8,000 RPM, then you could talk about a short runner intake. So let's find out what happens when we did this under boost. After running our intake comparison naturally aspirated, we installed boost in the form of a 76, 75 millimeter turbo from Precision. We also included an air to water intercooler and ran this on E85. We ran these all at the same air fuel and timing. And what I want you to take a look at is the relative difference between the intake manifolds, where they make power and where they don't. Because as you'll see under boost, they basically do the same thing that they did NA. So this was our combination first with the LS6 manifold that made 708 horsepower and 640 foot pounds of torque. And that's with the factory LS6. Here's what happened when we added our short runner intake manifold. And as you see, just as it did before, it made more power on the top and less power through most of the curve, kind of the same thing that it did NA. So this shows you right off the bat that a short runner manifold with boost <laughs> doesn't all of a sudden become a turbo manifold. Intake manifolds are RPM specific. They make power, they're designed to make power and be optimized for power production in a given RPM range. And Boost does not change that. They're still doing the same thing. The reflected waves still work exactly the same under Boost. So here's what happened when we ran Boost on both of those. The, the, this short runner manifold made 716 horsepower, but torque was down quite a bit to 608 foot-pounds of torque. Now let's take a look and see what happened when we ran the fast manifold. And just as it had with the, um, in NA form, it made more power than the LS6 and made more power even in this case than the short runner manifold in this RPM range. The equipped with the fast, it made 734 horsepower. Torque was about the same as the LS6, is 643 foot-pounds. But again, what I wanted you to see is that the fast manifold obviously makes more than any of the factory intake manifolds. It always has, and it has on all of these combinations that we've run. But also in this RPM range, it's very, very hard to beat for power. And a lot of the turbo guys will say, yeah, but the, the, the thing that I always get is the fast. Yeah, but it leaks, it leaks boost. <laughs> I, I can tell you that I've run a fast manifold on turbo applications, I don't know, 50 or 100 times. I mean, it's a lot. And we've run it up as high as 25 or 26 pounds. And I've never had that problem with them. I'm not saying that guys haven't, maybe they have. And I've never run 40 or 50 pounds with them. We just have never done that on the dyno. So maybe you might have a problem at those elevated boost levels. But in the, <laughs> you know, two bar of boost basically up to up to 29 pounds or whatever that we've run this stuff on. I just haven't had any problems. So let me know in the comments if you guys have, um, but for most of the stuff, seven, eight, 10, 20 pounds or whatever, I, I don't think you're ever gonna have a problem with the fast manifold ceiling. So here are the results of the test. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what'd you think about the test on the fast manifolds on all of these combinations, both NA and turbocharged? And your first question is, hey Richard, do these guys like pay you money to say nice things about the fast manifold? Uh, you guys can know I have no channel sponsors. I never have. Although I've been approached by a lot of people, I've turned them all down. And for the same reason that all of these people that approached me had things that they wanted me to say nice things about or whatever, and they just weren't a good fit for the channel. Now somebody comes up and says, hey, I want you to test this product and it's something that I can run on the dyno and, and show a direct back-to-back -back comparison on, I probably would be interested in doing that, but only if it's a good fit for the channel. I'm not going to stand up and take somebody's money and say nice things about an umbrella or an ear pod or whatever else it is, because that's not what this channel is about. And it's the same thing with this fast manifold. I've run this manifold 20, 30, 40 times, and every time I've run it, it does the same thing. I mean, it makes really good power, and up to 7,000 RPM, I've never tested anything that makes more average power, peak power, whatever, than this fast manifold. Now, you can do stuff at much higher RPM for with a short runner manifold like a ProFlow or a HireM or something like that on those kinds of applications, but remember that the important thing to get from this video is that whatever they do in A, 
they also do under boost. So just because you have one of these fabricated manifolds and it looks nice, I mean, that might be a good reason to put it on, but just because you have one of these fabricated manifolds and you add boost, it doesn't all of a sudden change what the manifold does. It still does the same thing. All the reflected waves still work. An intake manifold is RPM specific, and in that RPM range up to 7,000 RPM, the fast manifold is your best bet. <laughs> the only thing is, it's also very expensive. Now, I want to talk to you about one other thing. I want to talk to you about channel sponsors because I have had somebody approach me that actually makes automotive products and it's an offshore company and they make turbos and connecting rods and various things. And I wanted to see if you guys had ever heard of them or used any of their products. The name of the company is Max Speeding and I haven't used their stuff, but I'm talking to them and I might be interested in using some of their stuff and testing it on the dyno. And the thing that I like is, um, I already told them, as I've told everybody else that I have conversations with, I'm not going to stand up on camera and say nice things about your product. What I'm going to do is run it on the dyno and whatever it does, it does and that's what I'm going to tell people because that's what my viewers want to see. They want to see me test something. They want to see me tell them what the results are and that's exactly what I'll do. I don't care what it does or how much money you spend or if you send me products or money or whatever it is. That doesn't make any difference to me because I'm not doing this obviously <laughs> to make a fortune in money. So I, I want to know if you guys have ever run any of their things. Let me know in the comments and I might be testing their stuff later on and if I do, if it's a turbo or whatever it is, I'm going to put it up on the dial. I'm going to run it. I'm going to tell you exactly what it does. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I will keep testing.